Adventure tourer options at the budget end of the spectrum have been few and far between for some time. Which is why the Royal Enfield Himalayan has had a little playground mostly to itself for quite a few years now. More recently though, we have seen more options come into the market, including the Himalayan's most direct competitor yet. A bike that comes from an old, old rival. There are a lot of similarities between the Himalayan and the recently launched Yazdi Adventure, the most obvious of which you're looking at right now, the designs. There are more too, they both get 21-inch, 17-inch wire spoke wheels and absolutely identical levels of suspension travel and ground clearance. But there are some key differences too, so let's see how these two old rivals stack up in the modern age. The biggest difference is in the engine department. And this being the heart of these motorcycles, the differences here result in the two bikes having very different characters and identities. The Himalayan opts for a basic air and oil cooled long stroke motor with a two valve head. The Yazdi gets a more high tech liquid cooled engine with short stroke architecture and a four valve head. Which is why despite a significant displacement handicap, it's comfortably the more powerful motorcycle here. Things are closer when it comes to torque though, and here it's the RE that comes out on top. At the end of the day, the Yazdi's extra ponies make their presence felt, and it's the noticeably quicker motorcycle here. Whether it's from a standing start or rolling on in gear, the adventure feels quicker on its feet and pulls harder. It's nearly 2 seconds quicker to 100 kph than the Himalayan. And part of that is also down to it having 6 gears, one more than the Enfield. All this also means that you can hold higher cruising speeds more easily on the highway, which is a large part of what these motorcycles are all about. The Yazdi Adventure also has smoother throttle response than the Yazdi Scrambler we recently rode. Where the Himalayan does have an upper hand is when it comes to delivery and refinement. The RE's motor has a strong bottom end which makes it great for trundling around at low RPMs in the city or gently exploring the wilderness off-road. It protests far less than the Yazdi when left in a higher gear and runs smoother than its rival at high RPMs too. The Adventure becomes a little buzzy above 6000 RPM. But that being said, its refinement levels are considerably better than its sibling, the Scrambler, and this bike doesn't feel anywhere near as gruff. Thanks to its more relaxed state of tune, the Himalayan also throws up better fuel efficiency figures, both in the city and on the highway. While the numbers for suspension travel are identical, the ride quality delivered by these two setups is a little different. Now they both have generous amounts of travel and do a good job of keeping you comfortable, but the Yazdi has a bit of an upper hand. It feels very different from its sibling, the Scrambler, which is a bike that's set up a little too firm for its own good. The Adventure, in comparison, feels quite plush and comfortable, and is better at keeping you isolated from the road, even when compared to the Himalayan. And once again, these two bikes have almost identical running weights, but there is a distinct difference in how all those kilos feel from the saddle. In the case of the Adventure, many of them seem to melt away, and it feels a good deal lighter and more manageable. Its steering is also lighter, and it's the sharper handler of the spare. Both bikes feel a little soft and floaty when you start cornering hard, but the Yazdi is quicker steering and more communicative. The Himalayan, on the other hand, feels like the 200kg bike that it is, and it can become a little cumbersome in dense city traffic. The heavier feel at the handlebar also makes it a little more of a pain to carve through the maze of larger vehicles. The heaviness extends to the clutch as well, and the Himalayan will give you a painful left hand in city traffic sooner than the Adventure will. What's also apparent in the city is that the Himalayan throws more heat onto your legs than the Yazdi, and while it isn't going to cook you, it can get a little uncomfortable at times. The Adventure's radiator fan is housed in a duct that channels the hot air downwards, well away from your body, which is nice. On the flip side, when cornering at high speeds, the RE often goes into a weave mid-corner, it never really gets out of hand, but it will certainly unnerve you until you get used to it. The Yazdi also feels a little soft on the limit, but feels more controlled in general. One area that has long been a Himalayan shortcoming is braking, and the tail remains unchanged even today. So it's the Yazdi that stops quicker and more confidently. Both these manufacturers have less hardcore scrambler offerings that give you some amount of off-road capability. But for those looking for a more capable bike to take off-road, these are the more focused machines that will be on your radar. 
and here's how they stack up when the tarmac ends. The bikes carry their identities over to the off-road segment as well. The Yazdi once again feels noticeably lighter and more manageable. The lighter handlebar effort makes it much easier to place this bike precisely where you want it to be. But you do need to keep the engine on the boil to prevent stalling and make sure you have enough power on tap, which means working the gearbox and the clutch harder. The softer suspension setup feels great on the road, but it can make the adventure bottom out a little easier over big rocks. The Himalayan serves up its ample bottom end torque and pulls you around quite effortlessly off-road. You're more likely to just leave it in a particular gear and focus on other aspects of riding, and it's less likely to stall on you, which makes it a more forgiving engine and one that's better suited to off-road newbies. But the weight does make its presence felt, and the bike will require a little muscling around to keep it on track. We've made it this far, but now we must address the elephant in the room. The Yazdi Adventure looks extremely similar to the Himalayan. The overall silhouette and stance are almost identical, and if you squint your eyes from a distance, you might not be able to tell them apart. But credit where it's due, the Yazdi does have some distinguishing design elements. The shape of the tank is considerably different, and the headlight and instrument cluster turn along with the handlebar, unlike the Himalayan's slightly awkward-looking arrangement. Overall, the Yazdi's design comes across as a little more rounded and proportionate, while the RE comes across as a little more straight-cut and polarizing. But perhaps Yazdi's designers have overdone it in some areas, especially the metal framework around the front of the bike. Particularly annoying are the metal tubes on top of the fuel tank near the filler, which don't really contribute to crash protection but do make it quite difficult to mount a magnetic tank bag. Another thing that Yazdi could have spent more time on is quality and finish levels. Unfortunately, like we've experienced on previous Yazdis, we had bolts coming loose and falling off on the adventure, and the overall finish and quality levels are definitely a step behind the Himalayan, which itself is not the best finished bike in the Royal Enfield stable. On paper, the Yazdi does claw back some ground when it comes to features. It matches the Himalayan's Bluetooth-enabled navigation capabilities and ups the ante with an LED headlight and fully digital instrumentation. But its cluster isn't the best laid out or most legible unit around, and the RE's halogen headlight seems to perform a little better than the Adventure's LED unit. Both bikes get dual-channel ABS that can be turned off at the rear wheel, but the Yazdi also gets a more sensitive rain mode. This comparison has actually turned out to be very interesting, and a lot closer than I expected. With all the differences in their spec sheets, I expected either one bike to emerge as a clear favourite over the other. While the differences in the spec sheets do translate into two very different bikes in the real world, they're both equally good all-round packages, and you're not going to end up disappointed with either one. Picking between these two then comes down to picking the bike whose identity more closely matches your own. The Yazdi is undoubtedly the quicker, more dynamically capable bike here, at least on tarmac. Speed comes more effortlessly on this bike, and if that is your drug of choice, then this is the motorcycle for you. Just know that you will have to work this tool to get the most out of it. The Himalayan, on the other hand, subscribes to a much more laid-back pace of life. It's no slouch, but in comparison to the Yazdi, it is a little more unhurried, and the real joy is in easily accessing the ample torque at the bottom half of the tachometer. It's also a more forgiving motorcycle, which makes it better suited to those new to off-roading, although you will have to be mindful of its weight. Then there's also the fact that this bike is built on an all-new platform, and in that sense, it still has to prove itself in terms of quality and durability. This being a newer company, its sales and service network is also considerably smaller than Royal Enfield's. The Himalayan, on the other hand, has already been through a process of iterative fine-tuning, and today is a well-proven product. Personally, between the two motorcycles themselves, I find myself gravitating a little more towards the Yazdi Adventure, because it's that little more involving, quick and fun to ride, while still being a comfortable and capable ADV. What about you? Which one appeals more to you? Tell us in the comments below.